Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's lovely to see you all. This nice sunny morning. Another one. It's exciting, isn't it? So welcome to you all here in church and to those of you who are at home. So I'd like to say that all the information on our service today you'll see on the screens. However, there's been a bit of a glitch and I understand that although we'll have the music, the words for the songs won't necessarily come up on the screen unless something happens between now and the first song. So please make sure that you've got a service sheet because the words are in there. Okay, so if you've got a service sheet, that would be great. And the other thing I need to tell you about the service is that you might have seen in Grapevine that it is not necessary for you to wear masks when you're singing unless you'd like to. Okay, so we can sing without masks today. Um, other notices, I think all I've got to really say is don't forget there's food and drink festivals on today outside. So there's be tea and coffee in here with cakes and cream teas, I understand. So it all looks very yummy when I came in. So please don't forget to drop by. So that's that. And I have the privilege of announcing some bands of marriage. So let me do that now. So I published the bands of marriage between Aaron Ross Howard and Rebecca Katie Patmore, both single of this parish and of Ben Harry J. Hayhurst and Sarah Bryony Clark, again, both single of this parish. This is for the first time of asking, and if any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, then you are to declare it. Excellent. Shall we just pray for those couples? Lord, we pray that Aaron and Rebecca and Ben and Sarah, as they get ready for their respective wedding days, not only would their love for each other grow stronger, but they would become more and more aware of your great love for them. Father, we pray that you will be in all their preparations and that you will accompany them on their next chapter in their lives. Father, we just ask this in your precious name. Amen. And we'll say together the gathering prayer. Yes. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, and so we can call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now, now and forever. Amen. Okay, so now we're going to sing our first song. As I say, the words are on the sheet, and hopefully the music will come through the PA. Would you all like to please stand if you're able? <laughs> of Jesus, we must remain strong, stand up for what's right, turn away from what's wrong, keep watching and waiting for Jesus shall reign, be ready to welcome him when he comes again. Disciples of Jesus, let no one be seen. Christ will return and of that we are sure Keep watching and waiting for Jesus shall reign Be ready to welcome him when he comes again Disciples of Jesus endure to the end For heaven awaits so does Jesus our friend Shall reign, be ready to welcome. 
So last time, Heather shared um, a lot, and I think she's going to touch on it again in her talk today, about the shape that we should be. <clears throat> the shape that is our uh, mission, is our gifting, and is our place within the church and the world. But there is one thing that we are called to be, whatever our shape. Whatever our shape is, we should be, can you put it up, Michael? Kind. In the stories, in the Bible readings that we're going to hear today, um, we are going to hear how Jesus calls us to be kind, to do good, to keep on doing good, to keep on being kind. I wonder, what does kind mean? What does being kind mean and what does it look like? Maybe, I should have had the radio mic and I haven't done that, maybe speak to the person sitting next to you and think and discuss what does being kind look like? What does it mean? There's a lot of awkward shuffling going on. <laughs> Okay then, someone shouts at me, what does kind, give me another word or a meaning of kind. Thoughtful, that's a good one. Considerate. Sorry, say that again. Generous. Friendly. Oh, they're all coming at me thick and fast now, I can't cope. Loving. <laughs> Giving. All these, oh sorry, one more. Caring. All of these things and more mean kind. Jesus tells us, and the Bible readings today tell us, to keep doing good. Keep on doing good. I have the next slide. I should have the clicker, shouldn't I? Is it here? No. Ben rides on. I'd have liked to have played you uh, somebody reading this story, but they were all very American. And you know how you can only take about 40 seconds of that before you're like, oh, maybe you're kinder, maybe you're more caring, more tolerant than I am. <laughs> anyway, so I found the pictures. So... Ben rides on. Ben has a new bike, which I think is the first picture. He has a new bike, and he's really pleased with the bike. He loves the bike. It's shiny. It's big enough for him. It makes him go extra fast. He loves the new bike. And it says in the words, he even loved going to school on the bike. Even loved going to school. But, the next picture, please. Oh, oh, you've had a sneak preview now. He loves riding the bike, even to school. It's just arriving at school that he doesn't like. And the chap in the front has the most brilliant name. He is called Adrian Underbite. <laughs> Fabulous name. And he is older than Ben. He is bigger than Ben. He is bigger than anyone. And he is the school bully. Guess what he does? He steals the bike. Bill, Ben's brand new bike. He takes it and he rides off on the bike. Ben spends the whole of the school day planning his revenge, what he will do when he gets hold of the big bully. I've had those dreams. They never come off, do they? What he's going to do, he's going to sort him out. He's going to get his bike back and all will be right. But at the end of the day, can go to the next. At the end of the day, day rather, Ben finds his new bike, and it is hanging from a tree. And then he finds Adrian over the cliff, hanging on for dear life. The bike is broken beyond repair. Ben could react in any which way. How do you think the story ends? What, what prediction have you made in your mind? What happens next? Go on, Maggie. Underbite, great name. <laughs> the boy with the teeth, yes. <laughs> oh, Maggie has read too many children's books. That's the end of the story is Maggie has predicted that Adri uh, Ben will save Adrian um, and because that's how children's books always end. And it does. Ben surprises himself and Adrian by hauling him up 
by rescuing him. What is Adrian's response? Is he eternally grateful? Ben doesn't think so in the first place. He has run off. Adrian takes the bike and legs it, runs off with the broken bike. Ben is disappointed again. He has lost the bike again. But next morning, as Ben drags himself to school, he is surprised because there is Adrian with the bike all repaired. The response of both boys, it says on the last page of this book, surprises them both. Adrian is surprised that he is rescued and Ben is surprised that he is the rescuer. In our readings this morning, we're going to hear two accounts where we're told to be good, where we are told to not give up being good because we never know what the consequence of that doing good will be. So, could we have our first reading, please? Uh, The first reading is from Galatians, chapter 6, verses 7 to 16. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Not circumcision, but the new creation. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Yet they want you to be circumcised, that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation, peace and mercy to all who follow this rule to the Israel of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, where Jesus sends out the 72. After this, the Lord appeared to 72 others and sent them two by two, ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse, or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road when you enter a house first say peace to this house if someone who promotes peace is there your peace will rest on them if not it will return to you stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you for the worker deserves his wages Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town 
we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. So our theme this morning is what is our mission? So if we can have the first slide, please, Michael. So I thought, well, before I start, let's find out what is the definition of mission. So first thing I found out, it said, an important assignment given to a person or group of people typically involving traveling abroad. Sounds exciting. A bit more James Bondy, I guess. This is your mission, James, if you wish to accept it. Bit of travel sounds okay, doesn't it? The second definition I found, you know, as they give you two, was, or, the vocation or calling of a religious organization, especially a Christian one, to go out into the world and spread its faith. So we keep those in mind as we just work through. We'll probably come back to them in a minute. So last month, as Marion mentioned at Pentecost, we were looking at how the Holy Spirit is our strength and guide and how our shape is unique for us and that God has a purpose for each one of us. So just to recap, shape, if you weren't here, S stands for the spiritual gifts that the Lord gives each one of us. Different ones, unique combination of gifts he gives us. The heart or the passion for something, someone, some organization to work for or work with. Our abilities, so the things that we can do, he gives us those things that we can do. Personality, he makes us an extrovert or an introvert. Quiet, excitable, all those different things, those will come from God as he made us. And experiences, he gives us all a unique set of experiences. So in the end, it means that we are the only person that can help someone else with our shape, all those things. We sometimes are the only person that can help somebody else. So God's given us a unique set of all these things for a unique purpose. And then last week, Matt was asking, what does it cost to follow Jesus? And I'm sure a lot of you have been pondering that question through the week. What has it cost me to be a Christian? Matt told us that to be a disciple, God says that we must deny ourselves. Michael, have you got the next slide? There we go. Deny, us, deny ourselves, take up the cross daily and follow him. But why? What does God want us to do? What is our mission? Or what is our purpose? So, place to find out? Let's look in scripture. Our reading from Luke begins, after this, so we look back and see after what, we do find that fortunately it's after the reading that Matt talked to us about last week. So we know that it's after Jesus was telling the men who wanted to follow him just how difficult it would be, that they would have to deny themselves, take up their cross daily and to follow him. So there was no, I just need to bury my father or go and say goodbye to my family, follow Jesus, you follow him now. So after this, we come to our reading this morning, we're told, sorry, after this, when we've been told the cost of following it, we were told that Jesus appointed 72 others and sent them out. I think there's a little bit of discrepancy whether it's 70 or 72, but I think in that large number, we'll go with 72 is what it says in our reading. And they were to go to every place and town that he was about to go to. I think we've got a nice picture of 72-ish people. So when we think about people being sent out, we often think of the 12 disciples. 
And in actual fact, in the previous chapter of Luke, verse 2, we are told that Jesus sent out the 12 to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. But here we have 72 others that Jesus sent out whilst he was still there to advise them. So what were they, like interns maybe? Apprentices? It's a bit like he sent them out ahead of him, a bit like a preview. This is what Jesus can do. His instructions to them. They're almost the same as they were in the previous chapter for the 12. He told them to go out in twos. Doesn't say why, but presumably for safety. Safety in numbers. He says that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to God to send more workers. I think that's probably still true today. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. He tells them not to take anything with them. No money, no travel bag or extra sandals. <laughs> I think that's quite hard for us to com comprehend today, especially when I think of the size of my suitcase when I go on holiday. But I guess we're thinking more cabin bag rather than suitcase in the hold sort of situation. But if we consider stuff or baggage, the things that we don't really need but like to take, whether we think they're going to be useful. So whether that's physical things that we carry or whether it's spiritual things, what God is saying is don't let stuff get in the way. Maybe that helps. Essentially, he's saying travel light. Then he tells them don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Now, I don't know about you, but I quite like to say hello, good morning to people. Hello, this morning is walking down. And evidently it was the custom then, if you met someone, to have a little conversation, to sort of get into a little, how are you, and all that sort of thing. But this is urgent. Jesus tells them not to stop, to just keep going, not to stop and greet anyone on the road. And then they're to proclaim God's peace into the houses that they enter. And they say that the peace will come back to them. To stay in one place. Don't move from home to home and accept all the hospitality that's provided. So if you're not like in the food in one house, don't talk, house hop or coach surf or whatever, it, couch surf, whatever it's called today. Stay in one place. Accept the hospitality from that one place. It says, if the town is welcoming, then eat whatever it's set before you and heal the sick and tell them of the kingdom of God. If the town refuses to welcome you, then they're to move on, to go into the streets, it says, and to wipe all the dust from their feet. I'm not sure that that's the sort of thing we do, but what it means is like, wash your hands. Don't dwell on those who won't accept it. Perhaps shrug your shoulders and move on. But make sure they understand that the kingdom of God, that they've been told about the kingdom of God. It's not for the disciples to worry. God will deal with those later. So it says, ensure that the town knew that the kingdom of God was near. Ensure that people are told. It's up to them as to whether they accept it. They'd been given the opportunity to hear about it. So, is this our ambition to go from town to town like the 72? We know that Jesus commissioned the disciples after his resurrection, saying, we have the next slide, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's Matthew 19, 28. So if we think back to our second definition, it says mission means the vocation or calling of a religious organization, especially a Christian one, to go out into the world and spread its faith. Maybe that's what we're supposed to do. And we have just seen that Jesus has shown the 72, 72 disciples how to do this. So he showed them and helped them to understand what to do. Now, St. Teresa of Avilia said, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands 
no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ looks compassion into the world. Yours are the feet with which Christ walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which Christ blesses the world. So, if we put all those things together, what might your mission be? Remember with God, there's no too old, too young, too experienced, too inexperienced, too fearful. I'm not sure we can have too brave, but maybe. <laughs> he uses everyone to his perfect timing. So maybe your mission is to go abroad with the missionary society to use your shape. Maybe it's to move to a different town or a city or a village to use your shape there. Or maybe it's to stay here at St. Peter's and St. Mary's Stone Market and use your shape here to grow God's kingdom, to be God's advocate in your workplace, in your places of leisure, at school, or within your family. Our reading this morning from Galatians warns, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. God does have a mission for each of us, a purpose. Let us not become weary in doing good. Being kind, as Marion said. Whatever our mission, we should always be kind. We will not all have exactly the same mission. We need to speak to God quietly and individually to ask him to reveal what our particular mission or our purpose is. It might be to go out, but equally it might be to stay. It will depend on our shape. Whatever it is, I think we might need to remember, as Jesus advised the 72, pray to God to send more workers. The harvest is great. Take minimal baggage. If things don't work out, shake off the dust. Move on. Whatever happens, remember, always be kind. Whatever our mission, we should always be kind. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ looks compassion into the world. Yours are the feet with which Christ walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which Christ blesses the world. How will you use them? Let's pray. Father, show us what our hands should be doing for you, where our feet should be going. Help us to see where your compassion is needed and to love all people as you love us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come among us this morning and put on our hearts the mission you have for each one of us. The purpose you made for our shape. Come, Holy Spirit, come and speak to our hearts this morning. Thank you, Father. Amen. We're going to carry on in a prayerful uh, way. At the back of the church, on the first two tables that you come to, I've put out some pebbles and uh, some colouring pens. Um, you could go, if you wanted, during this time and during the next song, to decorate a, um, a, a pebble. You could decorate it with um, a wish or a... Uh, an inspirational phrase, something to do with being kind and being generous and being good. 
And then maybe you could take it with you and leave it somewhere for someone to see, not to trip over, but to see. Um, uh, you could give it away. You could leave it somewhere to be found as a random act of kindness. So any time you feel you want to go up and have a look at that, please feel free to go. But let's still our minds and continue in a time of prayer together absorbing all that we've heard so far this morning, processing what we've heard, taking it into ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that you give us a shape, that you have a specific plan that is for us, that you have gone before us. As you sent out the 72 and then followed behind, you knew what was coming. Send us out, Lord. Follow behind. Walk with us. Go ahead of us. Because you are the eternal God. You can be there in all places at all times. Lord, we thank you that you are good news in what would seem to be a world of bad news. All the news we read, all the news we see, all the news we hear is confusing, is depressing, is demoralizing. Stir us up, Lord, that we would continue to do good, that we would not weary of doing good that we would be your advocates here, that we can show the good news that you bring, the good news of healing, of wholeness, of hope. As we go out into your world, Lord, inspire us to be your hands. Help us to touch the untouchable, to fix things, to move things, to shape things to make better. As we go out into the world, Lord, inspire us to be your feet, to walk into those places where perhaps others don't go, to lead others in this journey. Lord, as we go out into the world, inspire us to be your eyes, to see what's happening, to bring it to you, to pray, to see with eyes of compassion. Help us, Lord, not just to look from the outside, but to feel internally, to feel deeply, to be moved. And maybe in being moved, we could keep on doing good. Lord, we pray for this community here of St. Peter's and St. Mary's. Help us to be church together. Inspire us to be family. For all the best of that and the worst of that, Lord, we bring you right to the heart of us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into the middle of our church into the middle of our planning, into the middle of everything we do. We think about this afternoon as everybody's milling around town with the food and drink. Help us, Lord, to minister beyond the physical. Help us, Lord, to realize it's not what we put into our bodies that make us good or different, but what we give out. And Lord, help us to keep on giving out, to keep on being good, whatever that costs, wherever that might take us, and whenever that might be. Lord, we pray that people would come in this afternoon, that this would be a place of peace, not necessarily of quiet, but of peace, of safety and of sanctuary. We pray for your church throughout the world. 
that Christians would be advocates for you. That the churches might look different, Lord, but we are singing the same song. We are telling the same story. We are worshipping you as the only true God. Help us, Lord, to be meaningful. Help us to be purposeful. Lord, we pray for those places in the world where being a Christian is not acceptable, where our brothers and sisters are being persecuted. Lord, lift them up. Stand close with them, Lord. Help them to be inspired by your suffering, by the stories of suffering within the New Testament, Lord, that we have hope beyond all things. Wherever we find ourselves now, we have a hope in you, a hope of being whole, a hope of being loved, a hope of being fulfilled. Lord, we pray for our government. We pray for wisdom, for mercy. Help us, Lord, to glean from the news what we actually need to know. Help us to work out what is really going on. Help us, Lord, in a very political with a small p way to be good where we are. Help us to be involved in our locality. Thank you, Lord, that there are people who will stand up and take on positions of authority. Help us to be supportive, Lord. Help us to pray for them, for Joe Churchill, our MP, for all our town councillors, for our town mayor, for our district councillors. With every decision, there are consequences, some intended and some not. Pray, Lord, that those consequences would not outweigh the good of decisions being made. Father, as we go out, help us to be the good news in a world of bad news. Help us to take with us something that we have felt this morning something we have learned this morning, and share it as we go out. It could be a random act of kindness, because, Lord, we never knew the consequences. We might surprise ourselves and surprise someone else. Lord, we never know the harvest that is being reaped in your name. We remember Ukraine. It's dropping out of our news gradually, but still that conflict goes on. We pray for a peaceful and just resolution. Thank you, Lord, for all the people who have taken aid, who have fulfilled their shape by going. Lord, inspire world leaders not only to throw weapons at this situation, but to throw humanitarian aid, to encourage diplomacy, to bring peace into, the, into that situation, into our whole world. Father, I thank you that when it seems dark, you are the light. Jesus, I thank you that when it seems really confusing, I know you understand because you were here. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are our inspiration, that you are with us, you are our comforter. So, as we finish our prayers together, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. It's in its modern form on the screens and in the service sheet, but please use the words that you know and you love the best. And we'll say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven.
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Living God, through our being here today, equip us to go out in your name, returning to our homes, families and friends, our places of work and leisure, and living out there in word and deed, our faith in Christ. Fill us with the resources that we need for faithful discipleship and witness, and help us to put into practice our calling and contribute to your kingdom. 
And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with each one of you this day and forevermore. Amen. There will be the opportunity. You can sit down. Yeah. Opportunity for prayer in the memorial chapel, and uh, we will be serving refreshments right through until, well, either until we run out or until 3:30 this afternoon. So, uh, if you're going a, a home for dinner, then do come out again this afternoon to see what's going on around town, uh, and uh, and we may see you later. Uh, but go in peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a good day.